Yeah, but what are the what are the things that you're doing to ensure that you know people know your party, for instance? Uh, there are so many abbreviations. You just talked about ADP. There's uh, in ADC. among the 68 parties. I mean, how many? You really can, but how do you ensure that as a political party, up and coming, that you stand out? Yeah, so so uh, ADP, what we are focused on today is that first we 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 are going to have direct primaries for for our election. That is probably one of the reasons we also did not go into that coalition. Uh, we believe that if we are going to pick candidates for for elections, we should not subject it to this delegate system which is quite corrupt, and at the end of the day, people will end up getting selected as candidates of party are not, are not necessarily popular. So one of the cardinal programs of the ADP is to have a uh, direct primary option, A4. And so that is, first of all, a selling point for the party. When we talk to people, they, they believe that, OK, uh, we are on board with that. So I, I will tell you that that's something we are doing. Another thing that we are also doing is uh, the fact that we, we are also focused on having new generation of leaders. Uh, we have had people who have been uh, with us in the last 20, 30, 40 years uh, recycling the same ideas with us. Uh, if, we, if we take the super egos today and we are still relying on Shego Odegbami and JJ Okosha to, to be the pivot of our super egos, they will be going nowhere. We need fresh players to take us there. Well, uh, looking at the entire landscape, you know, we heard very recently from uh, a presidential aspirant, uh, Kingsley Mogalu, former deputy CBN uh, governor, and he said, look, you know, that this coalition, in his view, that uh, it's a, a group of uh, individuals who are not well-intentioned, in his view. Uh, do, you, do you view kind of these groupings, whether it's APC or whether it's uh, the coalition now, do you think even within those parties or coalitions, there are individuals who can emerge that can potentially lead the country in the right direction? Or would, do you think it's just kind of a blanket arrangement where these two are just unfeasible and we just need to look somewhere else? Yeah, so, so I, I would not say everybody in uh, APC or everybody in PDP is bad. They all have their fair share of good people, no matter how uh, negligible the numbers are. Uh, today in Nigeria, what we suffer from, we suffer from what I call the uh, Stockholm Syndrome, where uh, the the hostage uh, is beginning to fall in love with those uh, that, that they are, they are own captors. So the political elites uh, represented by the APC and the PDP have actually held the country hostage, and uh, we celebrate them. You see somebody uh, goes on the street, steals a sachet of water, people put a tire around him and want to burn him up with mob action. But the political office holders will steal billions, you, you celebrate them in one bed parties and, and the likes like that. And what you, the situation you just explained is now expecting uh, an uh, anti, uh, anti Stockholm syndrome where uh, you now have somebody come through this process, the capital begin to have pity on the people that uh, I have dealt with these people enough, it is time for me to have mercy on them. And do I see it happening? I'll tell you that the structure is so strong that uh, even the current leadership in the country, no matter how well intentioned, you could see that he has struggled. No, but isn't there a place for pragmatism in politics, though? Uh, when you talk about your initiatives, you're, you have these kind of these lofty ideals that are very, uh, very, you know, they appear well intended, they appear altruistic. Uh, but ultimately, you would have to be in a position to be able to affect any of the change that you're referring to. These are the people that have the levers, the instruments of power, and the means of getting into power. Um, in, in your view, you know, you've talked about this reversal, that if somebody's there and they're corrupt, are they going to change their mind? But are there not individuals who have been able to go through some of these structures and still maintain some level of integrity and some level of altruism, in your view? Uh, yeah, so, so there, are, there are people like that, and uh, they, they, such people, you, they don't easily give them responsibility. I was speaking with a colleague not, uh, not long ago, and uh, he was saying, okay, why not uh, join one of the major political parties? And another colleague pointed out, even if you join one of the major political parties, nobody is going to support you. Uh, the reason is that they would rather support an average thug who probably is not educated, 
who probably is ready to follow others, everything that the boss does is correct, is not ready to uh, critique and say, well, I think this is another way to look at it. Uh, when you do that, it is believed that you are not loyal, you are not uh, uh, within the system, and then they begin to give you some space. So you have a few of those kind of people, but they don't get far in the system, in the current system. Mm. So I'm just wondering then, uh, how, do you, how do you expect... Because some people will say that if indeed uh, this coalition doesn't work, if indeed there is no viable opposition, if indeed there are no viable alternatives to the ruling political party, it will seem that uh, they have, they automatically have, the, the current ruling party has an automatic free ticket uh, come 2019. No, so our perspective is that for, for, for 16 years, uh, the, the PDP was an abysmal failure. Uh, in the last three years, the APC has even performed worse, and we need a general reorientation of the direction we are going as a country. Are you being fair in your criticism of these two political parties? Because if you say that they have good people, and in some instances, some of them did well when they were at the state level and things of the sort, is it really fair to use a sweeping broom of failure on both political parties? You need to check people who are our contemporaries. If you have uh, two kids and uh, for every school, you are going to have somebody who comes out first position, you are going to have somebody who comes out second and somebody who comes out third. It doesn't mean that the person who came out first in that school would have performed as somebody who came out 20th in another school. He could have come out with uh, maybe 56% average score compared to somebody coming out 17th and getting 70% average score elsewhere. As a country, if we are comparing ourselves, what we we'll do will be to compare ourselves to our contemporaries who were with us in 99. We are there today, and then that tells you how much we are fed as a country. When we commend some people, it is relative to their peers. And so if we say some state governors have probably performed this because we are comparing them to their peers, but that, again, is not where we should be. Mm, I agree that Nigeria as a whole is not where it ought to be, but given that our democratic experience only started again in 1999, don't you think that... That's 19 years. It's, I'm going to ask you something. Um, you, know, you say that you're looking for, I, would I say, an ideal system. Now, I mean, so far so good. You don't think that the two major political parties have done well. If you're elected into office as governor, what are, the, what are two things that you would do radically different that you immediately think will set you aside as one to watch out for? Yeah, so one of the first things we'll do is to uh, think of creating jobs for our youth. And uh, creating jobs for our youth is not by political appointment is by creating uh, the atmosphere that uh, will really uh, encourage private investment to come to our state. And the first one I will do, being that I'm contesting in Delta State, is that we have lost a lot of investment because of insecurity. And so to tackle the issue of uh, security, there will be real stakeholder engagement to say, well, uh, we can't continue this route because investors are leaving the state due to security concerns. If people do not listen to that, then uh, the, the law should take its normal course. So tackle the issue of uh, insecurity. The other one is how to create jobs, create jobs, create jobs for our people. One of the major highlights of what we intend to do is uh, for every graduate of Delta State after their national service, we intend to give them a startup loan of up to a million naira for them to set up something in Delta State. Mm. I don't know. Someone definitely can take on that idea if you think it's viable. If you don't think it is, I'm sure it's up to them. But we have to thank you most kindly for coming on Sunrise Today this morning. I'm Comrade Frank Esanubi of the Action Democratic Party. Now that's been Sunrise Today this morning. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. I'm Ajuri Ngilale. Have a wonderful day today. Well, yes, indeed. I'm Chamberlain Musa. Thank you for watching. And I'm Gimba Omar. Have a great day ahead. The views and opinions expressed by guests on this program are those of the maker and do not necessarily reflect the views, opinions and endorsement of Channels Television.